Um, and the next uh, uh, speaker is uh, Professor Li Chun Yang with a very uh, interesting title from basic research to uh, listing on the stock exchange. So, I'm looking forward. Good morning. I must declare that I have, uh, no, I'm no expert in extracellular vesicle. My specialty is actually cardiothoracic surgery and secondarily in helping my scientists spin off companies that I've done uh, quite a few. So over the years, in the last 15 years or so, I work with two groups of scientists, Lim Sai Kiang from a in Singapore and T.D. Fan and Ivor Lim from my department. This talk is designed for the young scientists among us. I will encourage people to spin off companies to benefit the world. And you should aim high, go beyond science so that you can benefit the humanity. And you need a lot of toughness, as I shall illustrate. So why do we need to spin off company? It's because if you want to solve clinical problems, you have to reach the patients. Otherwise, you will just publish and forget. And soon, everybody will forget about you. Secondarily, if you do have a spin-off company, the funding that you get will come back to your center and help research. So the company that we spun off, once they have visited, they promise to give us a lot of money back for research to encourage the younger people. And a third, it gives an alternative career. Instead of dying as an old professor, you can die as an old CEO. So there are two examples. One is Cell Research Corporation that we started since 2002. It is uh, a lot of stuff they can do. It's going to be listed in New York and Singapore Stock Exchange to next year. The estimate is between one to three billion US dollars, but I don't believe that until we uh, get money in the bank. The second one is with A Star with Lim Sai Kiang, started uh, last year, and uh, it's a long way to go yet. Come and ask me in about five, seven years' time. I will have some idea. At the moment, there's no clue, but we do have a lot of uh, patterns and so forth. So this whole thing started with the Lim Sai Kiang. When I, when I was talking to my research, research scientist as a chairman of surgery, I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I'm injecting stem cells into the heart. I told her, forget it. This is of no use because there are so much problems. So we decided to throw away the stem cells and focus on the paracrine factors. So as a result of this, we have discovered exosomes and from there on a lot of publication and research steps. And last year, we formed Paracrine Therapeutics. So of course, the whole thing starts with science. Important good science is the basis. And while we are doing science, we have to start thinking of the application that can be used. So you are familiar with these people, Dominic De Klein, Bridget Lane, and so forth. They were already thinking of what can be used in particular diseases as they are doing their research. So that when they are ready, we have a, a lot of clinical application that is available. So there are a lot of problems in Singapore. So it's like the inferno, Aban abandoned hope, all ye who enter this space. We are good in research, creation, IP, incubation, but then we have problems. The founders, after this space, there's a gap. So we have problems with management, how to make money, how to find money, what is the business plan, are we good in making business plan as scientists? And there's a long lead time to product development slow company growth, a lot of failures. If you do take in venture capital, they will dilute you to nothing. So you don't own the company at the end of it. So we must have a strategy to preserve control and direction of the company without giving the whole shop away to the venture investors. So we decided we do it ourselves with some friends who has no ulterior motive. They just want to do good for the people. So they give us money, for not for free, but they have a small share of the company without asking questions, and they lead us to do what we want. And so you need a lot of good friends like this, not the vouchers, which are the venture capitalists. So essentially, I told Sai Kiang and I told TT Fund, keep control of our direction. Don't let other people tell you what to do. And of course, 
there must be a strategy of a low-lying fruits to, re to have a revenue stream before we reach the global markets. We are fortunate in Singapore that we are emphasizing biomedical sciences. So there's a lot of money in the system, but we know how to, must know how to get to them and then how to translate and commercialize. And we also want to cap value capture for the country. Not like some other countries, they come to a certain stage, they sell the company, and the company moves to America or Europe, and then it's lost to the country. So we want to have factories and uh, <coughs> value in the, com in, the, in the country itself. So in the process of supporting the company, the, the startup, we need a support stru structure. So we need to know where to get free money, which is essentially grants and so forth, in our system. And then we must have a good pattern strategy to protect what we have uh, gained. And of course, these are good people who are billionaires and they are friends, so they give us money just for uh, interest sake. And you need to have a good or large collaborators within the system to give you support, clinical trials, animal trials, and so forth. And there will be facilities that you are unable to find within the country, such as good GMP facilities. So our strategy is to find them where they are available, such as Denver and in uh, Salzburg. And once we have sufficient resources, we can build our own within the country. So we have plenty of partners everywhere, China, Malaysia, Vietnam, for the uh, life company. So it's important to have an income stream. So the lowest income, uh, the easiest income stream is cosmetics. So we have liposome company that produces visidum, which is selling quite well, and this gives us revenue and keeps us alive for a few years before we go to uh, ask for further funding. And this is, of course, lower, lower regulatory hurdle, and our investors may be impatient for early revenue. But once you have money from these areas and research, contract research is another area, it can support the more important stuff like exosomes for psoriasis, for acute mother inf infection, for clinical trials. And we delay as much as possible looking for venture investors. So we find it very difficult, especially in Singapore, to find a good CEO who are able to do all this stuff. And often we have to rely on people who have done it before in Silicon Valley or somewhere else. So if there's anybody here who might want to spend a few years in Singapore becoming a CEO, let me know. There are many companies looking for you. And it is not easy for scientists and founders to become salesmen. I find that many of my scientists are unable to negotiate. They are very good in the lab, but outside the lab, they are lost. So you have to train yourself to negotiate deals. Cost, margins, milestone, deliverables, exclusivity, contract, and all kinds of things. You have to be knowledgeable of this as you prepare to uh, get into the real world. This is not the same as in the university. This is a hard reality. So at some stage, you have to decide what is the option. Do you want to sell the company to a big multinational, or you want to keep growing? So there are a few factors. Number one, how much staying power do you have? Are you going to go broke next month? If you're going to go broke, then sell the company. How young or how old are the founders? If you are 40, 50, 60, you still have many ten years to go. You can uh, go the distance. But you're already 80 years old, maybe you sell the company, you know, get the money and go, to, go fishing. How much is a company worth is a big issue you have to discuss with many people, bankers and so forth. It's based on your business plan and how much are there in the, in the, in the real world, your competitors, what is the window period before people catch up with you and how greedy are you. So once you come to the initial public offer in the, in the share market, 
you have to talk to a lot of different people, not your university chancellors or your dean of medicine. These are people who are bankers, investors, lawyers, stock exchange people, auditors, owners and public investors. They, they, they are different animals from us. We are talking to each other as friends, but they talk to you as adversary. And once you are ready to list, there's another whole set of things you have to uh, encounter. Governance issue, management, how to find facilities, what kind of accounting standards, meetings, AGM, reports, progress, regulatory issues, profit and loss statement, and there's a lot of public scrutiny and stuff. So this is uh, something you have to prepare to, to get into and uh, face. So in conclusion, it's a long way from simple idea through the stem cells, study the paracrine effect, until we leave the public, uh, public uh, market. In the process, it's going to be a long time. Very few people believe in you. They will tell you, no, you are doing the wrong thing, you are abandoning your science, you are not doing your career justice. But this is how your work will reach the patients. If you don't go through all these steps, your work will be a publication in nature, that's it. No more. And at the end, you don't benefit anybody except your own career. So, have a thick skin and keep a chin up and enjoy the ride. Thank you. I think it uh, was a fantastic lecture, really enjoyable, and your slides are, uh, are wonderful. Uh, I, I would like to get them, but that's not the point. The point is that I think we in Israel are facing the same thing, and actually we now make a big organization called 8400, you can look it at the internet, that aim at similar thing to you, but not for a single company, but doing it for all, all the country. <clears throat> to build a network of people, we pick up the young, slowly we introduce more and more people, it will take time, to build a network and educate the people to manage well the system, all the points you discuss here. So we want to get director at a senior level, let's say R&D director and CEOs and CFOs and these guys that can really do a good job, can speak with the outside world, can deal with the with the investor, can deal with the IPO and so on, but they need a lot of education. We also have another program we made, which is a kind of uh, give the background on what the biomed field mean, divided to three parts, to digital medicine, uh, medical device, and pharma, <coughs> and then we hope to build the structure. So I think, first of all, I would like to talk with you and maybe we can communicate and do a few things together. It's really two can make uh, together much better than one in development, and we are not competing, although we get quite a lot of money from Singapore, as a matter of fact. And, and uh, I think your, your advice to the young people, I think without the really building the startups and going further, the, the things we develop will have no value, really. We'll just yes. be a paper. And actually, people now have here to know that there is an opposite correlation. If you publish of nature, the chance that you get a drug on this is smaller than if you publish in, a, in pharma research, yeah. for some reasons. <laughs> that very straightforward correlation. So, I mean, we all like to publish in nature. It's very good because for our promotion. But from point of view of practicality, it's very different thing. So I think we really, without going the unfortunately they need the commercial way we will we cannot bring what we invented to help the society i'm not talking about money and all this aspect but what we develop should be and i don't know if anyone know what is the chance that you from the animal study to get a drug approved by the fda anyone know what are the numbers probably less than five percent how how many less than five percent 
It's one per mil exactly. Yes. <laughs> For drug delivery system, it's two and a half per mil. Yes. That's very good, but we want to get it today to one yes. percent. That's and then we can be. It's shocking the number, shocking. But that's the real number. We don't know about failures. Yes. You know, here we hear about things in advanced state, success. So, bottom line, one of the problem we don't do it right. So. One of the things is what you proposed and other similar things to, to make it the right way. So I wish you a great okay. success. So three things. Number one, we need to talk after this. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, you can have my thumb drive. No, no problem. <laughs> Number three, I just talked to somebody from Temasek, which is a big uh, sovereign wealth fund. They're interested to invest in nano drug delivery system. So if you have a good idea that uh, may want to surface to them, just come to, uh, talk to me. Right. Well, thanks a lot for the summit. And I think it's, it's, it's nice to note that uh, within Europe, uh, initiated by the European Technology Platform yes. on Nanomedicine, there's now the Translation Advisory Board that tries to stimulate and bring together uh, people indeed from two different yes. worlds to try and connect this. And uh, well, yeah. I, I see this uh, worldwide. And, uh, well, one thing about Singapore, yeah. we are too small, we have not enough brain power. So we need the brain from Europe and other places to Enhance well, our actually, quality. I, I, you, you drew your, your, uh, your, the, the cliff, uh, basically, I think even a little bit further than it is in Europe. In Europe, <laughs> we would have fallen off the cliff much earlier. <laughs> Thanks a lot again. Thank you. Uh, next speaker.